the aspect of consciousness. And it's one of the things that right now in our modern science, scientists are still investigating what that means, what that is. Um, what do you think consciousness is, Jose? Like it, in a way, it's an overarching form or energy that you know a lot of people have uh, over the ages considered as God. Something that is definitely alive, connecting us, informing us, sending information, thoughts, you know, from one person to the other. So you've kind of taken upon a kind of a more, I guess, cultural definition of consciousness in the sense of uh, religious kind of history of religion, uh, different cultures kind of defining consciousness as this energy, like you were saying. Some people argue, like I guess neurologists, certainly not all of them, but a fair amount, argue that consciousness is possibly an illusion of the mind, an illusion of this biological organ of our, of our brain. Neurons firing in certain ways for whatever reason make us think that we're aware of ourselves and make us think that we have free will and make us think that we control our actions. Now, I know, I really, I'm aware of certain experiments. There's an experiment done with this box. You have to press a button and they found out there was like a millisecond, millisecond. I can't remember the exact uh, number delay uh, between us being aware of making the decision to press the button. Now that's a whole other complicated thing. Right? Everyone claims that they're aware of themselves. Um, I'm aware yeah, of you right now. I'm yeah. aware that my parents are downstairs. I'm aware that there's people around me driving around in the city probably right now. But there's a lot of problems yeah. with consciousness because there's different levels of it. Like someone who's in a coma, someone who's dreaming, someone who um, has a mental illness. What is it? it changes consciousness. The consciousness that every human being has depends on their natural state or like their, you know, if, if somebody has a disability, does that mean they have less consciousness? Or well, what does that mean? Like someone with schizophrenia, for example, psychosis, who hallucinates voices in their head or hallucinates a person or a monster right there that's not really there. What does that mean for consciousness? That means they're consciously perceiving something there, a hallucination that you do not perceive because you're not the one with schizophrenia. You don't see what they're seeing. So how is that possible? You know, like, and now I guess that would fall maybe into the people who believe that consciousness is an illusion by the brain because the brain is creating the hallucination. And if that person is consciously aware of the hallucination, but you're not consciously aware of it, then that must mean consciousness isn't this objective thing, I guess. Is that what that really means? Or does it mean that we just, there, like you said earlier, different levels of consciousness. I guess, yeah. you know, our awareness is what we perceive to be real, right? Uh, even though I've studied psychology hardcore and, and I've, I've taken classes in biology, I've taken biological psychology where it was all just about the brain. Um, I understand the monist point of view that, that the brain is all there is and that consciousness is just an illusion. Like, I get where they're coming from in a sense that we really don't have a whole lot of evidence or experiments. It's not something up. you can grasp, right? It's, not, it's hard to measure. Like, how do you measure consciousness, yeah. right? But I also am open-minded in a sense to where I'm open to the possibility. You can't just reduce consciousness down to this physical brain. It's not that simple because consciousness is so complicated. It's, I mean, just look at our own experiences. The way we experience colors, the way I'm experiencing the color of your shirt being red right now. Now, Surely someone would argue that a colorblind person might see your shirt as a different color right now. And I see it as red. And yeah. that's an argument against what I'm saying right now. But experiences are so insanely complicated. Like the way we perceive everything, the way that we're aware that we perceive everything, that I'm aware I'm talking to you, a human being with all these complex personality traits that I've gotten to know over the past five or so years, all these memories that inter interact with me and stuff like that. Uh, the way we feel inspired, all of those things tie into consciousness. Consciousness is like the accumulation of all of these things that we are constantly aware of, this stream of consciousness that gives us the illusion of linear time. And I just feel yeah. like it's too simple yeah. to reduce it down to a physical thing. You know? In a way, you know, that, that is what consciousness is, is where everything lives, where all existence, you know, a lot of people have talked about that idea that you know all the possibilities exist within you know the realm of of, of consciousness you can say or, or existence it, it only takes you know 
something to alter it to become true. You can never know, you know, where an electron is going to appear, but you can only measure it at an exact moment in time. So it's only when you focus onto a thought, you know, when you focus into trying to find an electron that you find it and you're like, oh, it's right there in this measurement and stuff like that. But you yeah. can't measure where it's going to go, where it's going to be. Yeah, the double so it's similar to our thoughts, right? It's similar to our thoughts. When we focus on a thought, you know, that thought becomes a reality, right? And or, or it becomes a possibility. Part of succeeding in life does come down to mindset and believing in what hasn't become right and so it's being being able to be persistent and have patience to believe in something that is not yet existing now i i realize it can be broken down into this thought that thought tied to this neuron that neuron we could talk about quantum consciousness a theory by Stuart hammeroff an anesthesiologist i think believe at the university of arizona he was working on this theory of tying quantum physics, what you were talking about, the double slit experiment, to where uh, an electron can be in two different places almost at the same time, but you won't really know where it is until you measure it, until our mm -hmm. man-made measurement devices find it. We won't really know where it is um, in some sense in terms of being, a, in terms of the electron being probabilistic, not known, I guess, in that sense. And he, yeah, yeah you're, you're kind of tapping into quantum consciousness, like the idea of our thoughts working in that same way as the double slit experiment. Yeah.